pellet bows are bows that are designed to shoot pellets instead of arrows and this weapon has been widely used almost everywhere not only asia where it is still in use but also in middle east and europe although the european small game hunters preferred pellet crossbows but there is evidence of the use of this bow in europe as well as can be seen here on this painting of Vittore Carpaccio from 1490 showing Venetian hunters hunting birds on a Venetian lagoon. There are records about a man in an Ottoman archer treatise who had the nickname Kaman Q. Regi, referring to the skill of this man in using this weapon and it's also known that this weapon was used in trick shooting so as a small game hunting weapon it probably had no significance in war but because of its similarities with using a bow it was considered to be a skill and of course it was probably a formidable hunting weapon for small game as uh, pellets or clay pellets as well as rocks were quite a uh, very acceptable inexpensive uh, ammunition compared to an arrow in taking small game This is uh, a weapon called a pellet bow or kaman cure as it was called in the Middle Eastern uh, culture. It is meant to uh, take small game like birds by throwing pellets or uh, little uh, stones instead of an arrow. So the string is differentiated by having a pouch and separators like that, this. We really don't know how the strings of the Middle Eastern kaman cure uh, were designed. This is a design of a uh, South American type, which is called bodoki at that region. While the string of a bodoki is made of fibers, in many countries in Far East, the string of a pellet bowl is made of bamboo, which is a very common material there. So not only the, uh, the strings, but also the bowls itself uh, are made of uh, bamboo, for example, uh, in Thailand. Here you see Precha demonstrating the use of a pellet bow in Thailand. Precha is a bow maker as well and is the archery instructor of my young friend Tanat. Hereby I thank both of them to provide these videos as well as vast amount of information about the pellet bows used in Thailand. Years ago, Tanat gave me a bow as a gift, a Thai pellet bow, when we participated in an international archery event in South Korea. As you see, this is a very well-finished, beautiful bow, and it is provided with two strings. One of these strings is designed to launch a pellet, while the other string has a knocking point for an arrow. So these bows are usually made in draw weights 30 to 40 pounds, and they are drawn partially if it comes to shooting pellets. Uh, while they are drawn longer when it's uh, when it comes to shooting a full-length arrow and as you know that the weight of the projectile does matter if you shoot a bow so a very light projectile would be harmful for the bow and they solved the problem by shooting uh, the bow with a partial draw and a longer draw uh, when uh, the shooter switches from uh, the pellet to the uh, arrow in our case, we decided on a bow that is brought to full draw, but does not pull heavy. So this is a 17 pound bow provided by Onur Shimshek, uh, the renowned bowler in Turkey, who made this bow according to our request. So this very light bow uh, would fit uh, relatively low weight projectiles, hence the pellets. So it is uh, actually possible to make such a string by using uh, strings. I mean, uh, for example, in Thailand, they use bamboo and bamboo uh, does not rotate, but the, 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 the string tends to rotate. Therefore, these separations uh, really help to have a, a steady and a stable uh, string to uh, uh, accommodate a pellet or a rock. Uh, in our uh, initial uh, research, we will start uh, measuring the velocity, the initial velocity, by using a chronograph here. And uh, for uh, comparing that with a modern uh, small game weapon of the same kind, we are using a slingshot. 
A slingshot is a modern invention. Uh, it came to the scene only after uh, the introduction of vulcanized rubber because the natural rubber was uh, uh, caoutchouc, uh, which was used for the tires of uh, cars in 19th century. That's why, for example, Goodyear uh, opened fa factories in South America to uh, use the, uh, this raw material uh, in situ. Uh, and then he found a chemical uh, procedure called vulcanization, and that made these uh, natural elastomers uh, user-friendly. And just after two decades or so, slingshot appeared. So this is a 19th century invention uh, and uh, worked the same way. But before that, before the natural or uh, human-made elastomers were uh, available, uh, this kind of weapons were used, where the, uh, the elastic modulus of the limbs of a ball is used to store the energy and transfer it to a pellet or a rock. Okay, as you see, uh, the pellet uh, launched by a slingshot gave an uh, initial velocity of 155, 155 feet per second. And it depends on the mass of the projectile, of course. It is approximately four grams. They are marbles, in fact, uh, with a diameter of one centimeter, approximately. So uh, for a more accurate measurement, of course, we have to use uh, the same uh, marble all the time. But let's see uh, how fast it will be launched by a Kaman Curie. It is 146, but as I said, it's up to the mass of the marble. Okay, one of the uh, marbles that we shot is 4.5 grams. And the other one is 5.4 grams. So that's why the uh, speed difference uh, can be understood. One hundred forty nine feet per second. One hundred forty six. So uh, the velocities are really identical if it comes to uh, shooting the uh, same weight projectile. So, uh, of course, these weapons, especially when they're used in the countryside, uh, did not use uh, that precisely weight projectiles. Instead, rocks have been thrown or launched with this. But anyway, for uh, an accurate measurement and for an accurate comparison between the slingshot and the, the uh, Kaman Kure or pellet ball, we uh, had some identical projectiles to shoot, and it really clearly shows that these two weapons uh, perform almost the same and would work identical uh, in taking small game. Bow is a machine that converts the muscle power of human to different energy forms. The energy is stored in the form of potential energy when the bow is drawn and then transferred to the projectile, whether it's an arrow or a pellet, when the string is released. So this mechanism uh, requires the transfer of the energy as much as possible uh, because of the principle uh, of preservation of the energy in a closed system. The projectile should absorb uh, the energy as much as possible. So the heavier the projectile is, the more energy is absorbed by this projectile. So uh, there is a limitation of reducing the weight of the projectile if you uh, don't want uh, the high percentage of energy uh, to stay at the bow, which may cause even uh, the damage of the bow and the injury of the archer. However, it is different if it comes to a pellet bow because the string of the pellet bow is designed differently. So compared to a string that is designed to accommodate and shoot an arrow, this string has uh, a pouch uh, which uh, may uh, differ in weight depending on the size or thickness of the leather 
or whether the, this pouch is made of leather or another material. And of course, in this design of the string, the wooden separations also add some weight to the string. So it means when the potential energy is converted to the kinetic energy forms, this mass, this additional mass is carried uh, as well. So when we are weighing the string of the same bow that is designed to shoot an arrow uh, and uh, the string that is designed to shoot a pellet, we, we can see that there is a difference This is 17 pounds of draw weight at the draw length of Harun, which we had measured before, uh, which is uh, 68 centimeters. So we marked this length on the arrow and measured with the dynamometer uh, how much uh, the rubbers pull at this 68 centimeters of draw length. So it is different uh, in a slingshot. Uh, this uh, rubber bands or tubes, if it is made of a, a rubber tube, uh, will elongate four times or five times. This is a slingshot in which I adjusted the elongation uh, for four fold or four times. So uh, this length will be four times, uh, four times uh, longer if the shooter comes to full draw. Of course, in a cam anchor, it's completely different. It is the elastic modulus of the limbs that stores the energy, and the energy is transferred via this string to the pellet. We requested Onur Shimshek, the producer of Shimshek balls, to make a 17 pound uh, pellet ball for us. And interestingly, uh, we uh, had a confirmation of our estimation uh, with this experimental model. So the measurement of the jaw weights are the same, the velocities the initial velocities of these two weapons by using the same weight of the pellet were the same, identical. Now we're going to calculate the energy levels, uh, how much energy they store and transfer to the projectile, and uh, uh, test shoot them for accuracy. The calculated kinetic energy in these setups are 5 joule, which is the uh, minimum given in the literature for hunting small game. And of course, in both the slingshot and the uh, pellet ball, these kinetic energy levels can be increased uh, by, for example, using stronger rubber bands, drawing farther back, uh, using a lighter pouch, etc. And the same with the pellet ball. You can use a heavier bow, a lighter pouch, it can draw the bow uh, farther back. There are some extreme records, for example, the world record for a slingshot uh, or for the energy generated by a slingshot is over 100 joules. But of course, these are extreme cases because uh, for a weapon that is manageable for an average hunter and to be uh, able to take the game in a predictable way, uh, the energy should be maybe at around 6 joule or a little bit higher than that and as much as 10, 11 joules maybe. And uh, according to the literature, the largest small game that you can take with a, a slingshot is a rabbit. And uh, I would assume that it is the same with a pellet ball. In the Southeast Asia, it is mainly used for taking uh, small birds. And for uh, any uh, type of small game uh, up to the size of a rabbit, can be taken by using these both weapons. It would be correct and accurate to say that the pellet ball was the predecessor of the slingshot. I'd assume that both weapons uh, are suitable to take a small game uh, as large as a rabbit, and they are quite uh, formidable weapons with a very cheap ammunition and in the hands of an expert uh, they both are capable of taking small game uh, in distances up to 15, even 20 meters uh, in a very predictable way. Of course, despite our experience in bow shooting and uh, the hatra that is used uh, as a part of the shooting technique in thumb release, this bow is still a little bit different and requires a slightly different 
motor skill. So that's why it may need more practice. But still, uh, we are going to compare these two weapons uh, accuracy-wise. Yani burada, yani burada. Neither of us is experienced with keman cure or the pellet ball or the chip shot. We do have these in our arsenals, but we are not. An expert by no means. So uh, even with uh, this uh, few experience, it is quite possible to have a consistent grouping from 10 meter distance. And of course, if it comes to taking small game, you have to have tighter grouping. But with practice, it is also of course possible. And these these weapons, both actually, uh, have been in use for uh, a long time. This one less than two two uh, hundred years, but this one. Uh, probably uh, much more older than this. It's nice to see that uh, these are quite identical uh, energy-wise and even accuracy-wise uh, in the hand of an expert. Last but not least, let's talk about how to shoot the pellet ball. Shooting a pellet ball is not too much different than shooting a ball, especially when you're familiar to shooting with thumb breeze, because like uh, shooting an arrow with thumb release, the bow should rotate on its vertical axis outwards uh, as an outcome of the pre-applied torque to the grip. Uh, still, it's a wise decision to relocate the pouch a little bit upwards. So it, if it is a little bit higher than the knocking point of the would-be arrow, it will be safer for your hand but it will change the point of aim so you will have to get used to this new uh, motor memory let's say when you switch from uh, shooting the arrow to shooting a pellet other than that Precha, the instructor of my Thai friend Tanat uh, advised his students to use paper balls instead of clay pellets or marbles or whatever so that uh, they will not be they will not be get injured when they uh, hit their hand with these pellets so you can easily make these paper balls by using uh, magazine papers so you can cut off strips from the magazine papers and uh, pack them together by using a tape so they make uh, good paper balls to start with